All right, so we're talking about mitosis in the cell cycle, and we're using the onion root tip squash method to gain an understanding of this and looking at the a number of cells that are actually undergoing mitosis, as I talked about today. Uh, we're specifically looking about eukaryote uh, or organisms in that uh, prokaryotes who do not have a nuclear membrane or any kind of divider between uh, parts of the cell um, undergo binary fission. They don't have a nuclear envelope or a nucleolus or defined uh, areas of a cell. So we're talking primarily eukaryote organisms in this idea of mitosis, but it's very important you understand that mitosis, okay, is really a small part of the overall life cycle as we can see from the data that we do collect either through our microscopes or these examples. Now I will also say that um, mitosis is not only just cellular reproduction for growth and normal maintenance, it also happens when um, specifically plants undergo a sexual reproduction. A sexual meaning they're not using or not making any gametes, they're just copying themselves. Anybody who's any type of gardener and has taken tubers um, from different type of plants and replanted them can see that. Uh, budding is another, also another example and hydras do that as well. So mitosis, although not talked about a lot as, as, um, as part of sexual reproduction, we would talk about meiosis, but there is cases where in asexual, making an entire copy and a daughter cell uh, could make an entire new organism. Any case, getting to the um, work here that I want to review, um, I want you to see that, um, uh, I want to be able to move this over, that um, looking at the data here, you can see, Mr. Gronsky, I do not have exactly the same type of, uh, of cells in each phase. What we're doing is taking these cells and using our understanding of the different parts of mitosis, understanding that in interphase, we're duplicating DNA, but we're not really in the actual mitosis, uh, uh, we're not in the duplication phase, we're not in the process of making daughter cells. It does begin an interphase, okay? So when you look at these cells, as we did to get today in class a little bit, I want you to understand that we're using models, and in this case it's a drawing, so it's really hard to sometimes look at drawings, but if you look carefully, uh, understanding interphase is when the DNA are not condensed yet uh, into very thick, thick strings, and you can see that most cells, even where it has a nucleolus or not, don't be confused. These dots are basically a bunching up of uh, ribosomes being made, and they can become stained and very dark. So this is not a nucleus, it's a nucleolus, and this is a nuclear membrane. So as we can see, most of these cells um, do not have any of the um, uh, really uh, dark stains or large thickness that chromosomes will show in this uh, procedure and we stain the cells. Any case, very quickly, you can see that I've counted 31 uh, in the blue. Okay, you, see, you might have a discussion, Mr. Grotsky over here, this one looks like it's condensing. And you know what I want you to get from this is that we may not agree on exactly these numbers only because, well, mitosis is a continuous type of, of um, process. It's not, it doesn't stop at prophase and metaphase. We, we try to categorize it, but it's continuously going from interphase to prophase and metaphase. And sometimes you'll have discussions of, hey, is that really telophase or is that really... Uh, anaphase, and, and, and those are tough to distinguish, and we can have those arguments all day long. Who cares? The idea is um, that we're copying a complete genome, uh, a complete um, set of, uh, of genetic information is being passed on, or making complete copies here, okay, in mitosis. So starting with, um, in this case, I believe there's, there's 11 uh, chromosomes involved. Any case, or moving forward, so I counted, and again, our numbers might be off a little bit. To get the percentage of total cells, I took uh, the part over totals, how we get a percentage, and took, for instance, an interface, 31 over 40 times it by 100, and that's how I got my percentages. I didn't put the others there for um, anaphase and telophase because they were still all 2.5%. They were one out of um, 40. I try to color code this the best I can, and noticing I'm calling this... Um, a telophase, only because I think I see a line here. It looks like a nuclear envelope is starting to uh, start. And again, this could be uh, up for discussion or debate,
but I'm going to make that distinction. If you didn't call this telophase, who cares? Uh, clearly, I think this is anaphase because there isn't a nuclear envelope. Again, these are discussions we can have. We should be close. I don't expect to be perfect here because, again, there might be scenarios where we disagree. And again, it's a continuous process. All right, we're not concerned about having the exact number. If we do enough of these, those numbers should average out. But you should be able to look at a model and using your understanding of the phases of mitosis and understanding a life cycle a little bit, be able to distinguish uh, uh, a good portion of this. Now, time and phase, some people had some questions. How do I get this? Well, if we're going to spend one day with these cells, how long did they spend? How long did they spend in each of these phases? Well, if 77.5% of the total cells are in interphase, in our snapshot of all the cells in our microscope, we can probably make a good estimation that if 77.5% were in any interphase, then 77.5% 77 .7, of the time, they're in interphase. So if we're going to use a 24-hour period, for me to get 18.6 hours out of it, all I did was take the 77.5% and times it by 31. Just remember, when you're doing a percentage, you move the decimal place two places over. So there it is right here, 0 0.775 times 24. So I'm assuming a life cycle of 24 hours, or I'm just saying, hey, in 24 hours, how much time do these uh, cells spend in interface? And we can make that estimation from the percentages. Just like if I take a snapshot of all the people in the earth right now, how many are sitting in cars? Okay. And if right now 30% of the entire world is sitting in cars, I could say that 30% of the time they're in cars. Now, of course, that's not going to be perfect, but if I took a billion cells, I start to get pretty close. So it's an estimation, one that we can live with. So in any case, all I did was take the percentages, which I got from the parts over the total, and again, 15%, I would take 0.15 times the 24-hour period okay if we're assuming a 24 life period that's all I'm doing okay and the mitotic index we talked about today is just a measure of how much how many cells are actually dividing or in mitosis all right and of course um, that's what we have going on all right here so I took 6 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and I divided by the 40 which is the total so 9 out of the 40 are involved in some kind of active mitosis we don't count the interface even though we know that the DNA is replicated there so when I go on to the next group okay a little more difficult because these are actually cells even though they're cut and pasted they're in Photoshop nicely nice for us so I color coded this as well and we can have some similar arguments hey how do I know what's prophase and interface well look at the entire model here look at it and know that hey the cell cycle Gosh darn it, the cell is growing, it's getting bigger. Uh, gosh darn it, most of its time is not going to be spent dividing. Usually at the end of its cycle it does that. So the bottom line here is, look at these. These all, even though they have different colors, I'm going to say, generally speaking, these are all interphase. Yeah, all in, even these daughter cells. Mr. Grotsky, they just got done splitting. Yeah, but now they're individual cells. Okay, so I'm going to say that these guys, now you, may, you could argue. You could argue maybe that's telophase, and we could have a discussion about that. So you're off by a one or two. Don't get crazy. But if you understand that most of these, including these, are just uh, well, not that one, but these are your interface. Okay, now when what looks different from my vantage point, understanding that in prophase, the chromosomes start appearing as strings, as dark lines. Prophase for me, and I made that as red, is when this looks different. It got darker. This interphase became prophase when we have the uh, chromosomes starting to condense. I mean, what about this, Ms. Grotz? It's a little darker than that one. Yeah, but I don't see like these stringies appearing like I do here or, okay, here, okay, or here. And that's the discussion we can talk about. We're using the models or these, in this case, pictures of actual atoms based on our understanding. But it's a continuous process, so it's hard to know exactly stop and start. Some of the ones in between, we're going to have discussions. Okay, so for me, these are all interphase, but then when you get me some darker colors, definitely of strings of chromosomes condensing, and they could just be starting to condense, which gives us a, a room to pause and say, oh, well, why can't it be something like this? I think this is starting to condense, and then we're just going to be cutting hairs or cutting cells. Huh. Any case, again, 
we can have those discussions. So if you're off by you know one or two at most of these, that's okay. And again, maybe I can be convinced of your classification these phases. But again, this is just a continuous process. Hard to know in between the prophase and the metaphase of the anaphase and telophase exactly. And some people would argue that with me. It's definite when this happens. Well, the, con the cell continuously is, is changing, so it's hard to put a divider there. Okay, my anaphase, I had a lot of them here. And I had to really be careful because telophase is when a nuclear envelope is starting to appear. And I thought that was here. And that's my distinction. Here, I still see the spindle fibers. Okay, and uh, for me, uh, it looks like uh, telophase was, was here as well, and you can make an argument. So again, uh, if you want to come back tomorrow and say, hey, Mr. Gratsky, I disagree here, I'd like to hear those arguments, and I could be wrong, but this is my classification. And again, if we're off by one of any of these, and I know these numbers would change a little bit, no big deal. It's just a matter of knowing where we fit in these phases. Okay, then my totic index, of course, is 20 over 75, and it's 0 0.27. If you notice, that's a little bit higher than 0.225. So you may say, hey, these cells that are under caffeine, okay, had a faster rate of growth because it was more what? Mitosis going on. Careful, careful, careful. How do we know it's significant? Okay, how do we know that the cells, the onion that I got this from, wasn't grown in a warmer temperature or had more light? Or that even the student who was doing the root tip squash was even good at it and found the right part of the tip. So there's many reasons for us uh, not really believing the significance of this. We're going to learn about something called statistical tests to see if, in fact, this is a statistical difference considering all other things equal, like there's not other errors that I'm talking about here. Uh, back to time and phase. How did I find this time and phase? I took, again, the idea that if I have 73.3% of total cells in interphase, then 73.3% of the time in a day, they're in that phase. So I just took this percentage times 24 again, like I did the other, um, other, other sheet. Okay, no big deal. And then of course I made a little uh, pie chart. Although the, when it made a PDF, it kind of moved a little bit. I gave it a title: percent of life cycle of onion root cells in mitosis. And I made um, a, a chart to show the relative amounts of each. And it's disappearing on me. Okay. All right, so you notice 2.6 hours. If I cut this into a quarter, okay, that a quarter of, uh, we could just, again, see that these are just representative slices, okay? They don't, they're just they're not drawn to perfect scale, obviously. But it's a nice way to look at your data. And if I wanted this in a lab, you would do this in Excel and get an exact pie chart to do, which would be a lesson for another day. I hope that helped.